If a valve will be used to facilitate donning by use of a donning sleeve, the area of the valve must be flattened as shown. The valve is placed anterior and medial as far distal as possible, but still allowing easy access. Again, continue to smooth the cast following the general contours. With a round shore form file, begin to shape the axilla. Round in the corners where the medial wall meets the anterior and posterior wings. The height of the media wall should contain the tissue fully to the axilla. This height should have been identified in the plaster impression. Continue to shape the anterior wing to conform to the deltopectoral anatomy. Reduce the media wall overhang to be about 3 eighths of an inch wide to provide sufficient flaring.
measure the AP of the proximal model. This dimension will be fine-tuned at the time of the test fitting. A snug fit of the anterior and posterior wings of the socket provide rotational stability. Measure all circumference levels and begin to reduce the des to desired values. Generally, the proximal level will be slightly smaller than the measurement taken on the residual limb. Distal levels will be equal to the residual limb measurement. These tension values vary with tissue consistency and residual limb length and the type of suspension desired. Here we see a typical shape of the brim level. The medial wall is relatively flat. The corners where the medial wall meets the anterior wall and posterior wall are rounded, that is, not left square. Next, confirm that all circumference levels are to the desired goals for the particular patient. Smooth the cast with fabric cut or screen. Identify the trim lines that the test socket will be cut to. Note there will be no flaring of the proximal lateral wall away from the body. This will provide a smooth contour underneath clothing. Mark the exact valve location. For custom rolled silicone sockets, identify the exact mounting anchor locations. The plaster model is now ready for test socket fabrication.